This is Lesson 6-4 in Geometric Sequences. Our essential question is, how are geometric sequences related to exponential functions? So the first example asks us to identify arithmetic and geometric sequences. So we want to know, is the sequence an arithmetic or geometric sequence? So if we remember, arithmetic means you're adding or subtracting each time by the same number, which we call d, our common difference. And a geometric sequence means you're going to be multiplying each time by a common ratio, which we call r. So what we're looking for is, are we adding and subtracting the same, same, time, same amount each time, or are we multiplying by the same amount each time? So if we look at this, we know, so to go from 3 to 2, that's minus 1. But to go from 2 to 4 thirds, that's not minus 1. So we can say, okay, not arithmetic. But then if we look at the geometric sequence, what we want to do is we want to take the later number divided by the earlier number. So 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. So then if we take 4 thirds divided by 2, that's cutting 4 thirds in half, which is 2 thirds. Then if we do 8 ninths divided by 4 thirds, or we keep it, change it, flip it, so we keep the first fraction, change it, and put 3 fourths here, that would be 24 thirty-sixth, which reduces to 2 thirds. So what we found is that there's a common difference each time of two-thirds. We're multiplying by two-thirds. So that tells us that this is geometric. Okay, if we go down to the second one, I can, sub I can add 1.5 to get to 4.5. Then I can add 1.5. Then I can add 1.5. So I can see this one's adding a common difference each time, so that means this one will be arithmetic. So the first thing we're going to look at is how do we write recursive? So remember back to arithmetic sequences when we did recursive and explicit. The good news is these formulas are going to be very similar to what you remember back, hopefully you remember, back to arithmetic. So a recursive formula is going to look like this. We're going to have a1, which is going to be your first term. Then you're going to have a n equals a n minus 1. Remember, that just means take the term before, and then times r, which is our common ratio. So we basically need to know the first term, and we need to know the common ratio. So the first term's easy. That's 8. To find the common ratio, remember, we take the second number divided by the first number. So 12 over 8 if we reduce that down, that would be 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. Now, just to be sure, let's do 18 over 12. So I could divide both of those by 6. That would be 3 over 2. So you'll notice that that means we're multiplying by 3 over 2 each time. So that means my recursive formula would be a1 equals 8, my first number, and then a n equals a n minus 1 times, and sometimes it's easier to just use parentheses, especially with fractions, times 3 over 2. So that right there is my recursive formula. So now looking at the same sequence, the question is what's the tenth term in the sequence? So remember, it's not always easy to find any random term with the recursive formula, so we're going to use the explicit formula. So the explicit formula for a geometric sequence is a n equals a1 times r, our common ratio, raised to the n minus 1 power. So we already know from the previous problem, this is the same sequence, we know that a1 is 8, and we found our r to be 3 over 2 by dividing the later number divided by the earlier number, or the second divided by the first, or the third divided by the second, so that tells us that our recursive formula is going to be a n equals 8 times 3 over 2 raised to the n, oops, n minus 1. So this right here is my explicit formula. 
And remember, if we want to find the tenth term, we're finding a with a subscript of 10. That just means we're going to replace n with 10. So 8 times 3 over 2 to the 10 minus 1 power. So we're going to type that into our calculator. Um, I would suggest 10 minus 1 is an easy math to do in your head. So when you're typing it in, I would do 8 parentheses 3 over 2 raise 2. So remember on your calculator, it's that caret key. It tells you that you're raising to a power. And then I would just put 9 for the power that you're raising it to. So if we do that, we get 307.546875. So kind of long decimal, but that would be our tenth term. Okay, our last example here. So it says modeling. So the number of subscribers to a blog doubles each week. How can the trend in subscribers be modeled? So we see over here, it says that our first week we had five subscribers. So if we think back to our function, it's a times b to the x. So this we could write as 5. Now when it's doubling, that means we're multiplying by 2 each week. So we could write it as 5 times 2 to the x. And then if we wanted to write it as a geometric sequence, we could say a n equals 5 times 2 to the n minus 1. So that's kind of the connection between those. Okay, let me.